as mr david was saying steel day is one platform which is bringing different stakeholders of the construction value chain together and i am very happy to say that tata steel we have been associated with the steel day since inception and every year we have been participating and in the process not only are we are sharing our contribution our efforts we also get invaluable feedback from all of you last year uh, when we met here i remembered different feedbacks and we had organized a plant visit to our kapoli plant for large dia sections we got many feedback and i'm very happy to share that last year in the year which we have just completed the structural section sales the usage of uh, these large dia hollow sections uh, grew by almost 94% which we have registered so thank you very much <laughs> on this positive note uh, we have made a small presentation for just to highlight what is happening globally uh, we have some expertise tata steel has operations in europe uh, uk netherlands we also have operations in nat steel in singapore so we have the perspective of what is happening in the construction space in developed world then we'll come to see what's happening in india what is relevant for us some of the observations some of the trends we'd like to share with you and then uh, the technical discussions we have lined up very interesting sessions are there so i'm sure we will all benefit from these two days uh, can we go to the first slide okay so friend there is a, there are many you know fundamental shift is happening in construction space and there are six main drivers globally first is urbanization we all know that the population migration is happening from rural to urban spaces and as urbanization increases it requires construction which in turn will result in the higher demand for steel and associated materials it is expected that by 2030 50% of population in india will be urbanized the second big shift is what we are seeing as in technology and digital digital has gone leaps and bound in all spaces of uh, our lives now we have 5g already here where there is a artificial intelligence chat gpt all tools are there we have also seen a usage of digital in construction space bim this we many of you are using we have augmented realities we have experience realities all these things are there and there is a huge increase in modular construction which we have seen so this is these trends are going to stay there a uh, third point is on sustainability which mr amit shah also touched in his welcome address our one problem which affects all of us globally is the climate change and uh, whether you are from a poor country or a rich country developed economy or a developing country we all have to address sustainability issue in some countries already regulations are there in india also we have taken a very ambitious target of uh, decarbonization by 2070 as a country level but some industries like including tata steel we have taken that we will be uh, carbon uh, neutral carbon by 2035 so this is uh, we expect we have already seen impact in automotive industry bs6 has come i'm sure similar kind of stringent regulations will come in construction space also the other big shift mega trend is in mobility mass transport the whether it's sir airports railways or the waterways you will find lots of things happening here energy there is a clear shift from conventional fossil fuels to the renewables so whether it's a solar whether it's hydro wind we all have to there is a shift happening there the last mega trend which we are observing is on the 
aesthetics part, the design part, earlier buildings were more functional, more of the valued in terms, but today aesthetics is becoming a very important deciding factor. Uh, you, you, we, we have seen even in industrial structures, uh, the design is now playing a very important role. So these uh, six mega trends which we are seeing, they are going to affect our construction space also. So we discuss about the technology and digital in India also is coming. This growth which is India is the economic growth. India is the one of the few uh, bright spots in global economy. We have seen slowdown in USA, recession in Europe, conflict between Russia and Ukraine is not helping global economy. We have conflicts in our neighboring countries also. There has been slowdown in China's growth also. Here India is the only country in the large country of our size which is growing, doing reasonably well. And uh, there is a unanimous uh, uh, acceptance that India, the next decade belongs to India and India is going to do very well. So we are in a very good spot in the right time of this, uh, in this country. Sustainability we discussed. This is going to be very, very important. Customer convenience. I think this is also evident. Now, people are preferring convenience, design, what we mentioned, how it is going to help us in our day-to-day -day activities. Regulatory oversight is also increasing. Uh, the BIS, uh, we have seen the quality control orders by Government of India. Recently, there was an article that even toy industry, there has been, they have put regulations. So cheaper imports from China have been now restricted. So same thing we are seeing in different segments, different industries. The regulatory oversight, which is focusing on quality and sustainability part. And in India, the construction space, we have seen entry of many global players. And uh, Jeffrey is here from Arup. He will also share with us the global perspective, what is happening there. But these are becoming uh, quite a big norm. So there are four major things. How it just, these things are going to affect our construction value chain. First will be on the nature of construction. The second is on the construction practices then the emerging materials and the value chain transformation. So nature of construction, just to put simply, a lot of uh, earlier on-site construction is happening, but now off-site construction is also becoming popular. Modular construction is going to happen. Construction practices uh, from manual to automated, we are seeing. We are using more digital tools. Emerging materials, steel is becoming popular. LGSF is becoming popular. Uh, concrete, people are now questioning started. It's not only the initial cost, but the life cycle cost and the sustainability part and the value chain transformation. Uh, what I mean by value chain transformation is that earlier the major contracts were given on a piecemeal basis, but now there is a tendency to give design, procure and build. You know, turnkey projects, these are being now awarded. So these are the four major shifts which we are seeing in Indian construction land spec. So construction practices are now uh, evolving from three Ds, what we call, to three Es. From dirty, dangerous, and demeaning to energy focused, exciting, and efficient. Uh, these are the few examples what we have shown. If you see the usage of steel in India versus what's happening in globally, uh, the total steel consumption in the world is close to 1.6 billion tons. And China contributes uh, more than 50%. India is, uh, interestingly, now become the second largest consumer of steel globally. So we can have a big round of applause for this country. You know, you have seen we are ahead of uh, USA and Japan, uh, but if you see the contribution of steel uh, in construction, how much steel is consumed by which sector, so construction is the biggest consuming sector. In India, it's 
uh, in countries, emerging countries, the usage of steel uh, construction contributes a lot. It's typically long projects, the rebars and other parts, you know, the open sections kind of thing. But when we see the trend in developed countries like USA or say Germany, uh, the, there they use more flat projects, the plates, the, 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 uh, the color-coded sheets kind of thing. So in USA, flat products contribute to 75% of steel usage compared to long products. In Germany, this is 64. In India, 54% of FP is there, you know, kind of thing. Total sales also. This we have seen. That construction segment, uh, earlier we used to have very broad definition, like defense, infra, these were the broad segments, you know. But now, people are doing more and more deeper level of micro-segmentation. And just for an example, infrastructure, which is the broad category, then segments uh, like transport can be one sub-segment, then you have energy as a segment. But within transport, you have sub-segments of railways, airways, ports, you know, the water sanitation and supplies, roads and printers. So these are the like sub-segments. And when we take railway as a sub-segment, now in India we are seeing many micro sub-segments. The micro segments are within railways are like, for example, bullet trains. They require different kind of steel. Metros, they do is different kind of you know material. The modular stations which our government is doing. So station, they use different kind of material. Their needs are different. Tunnels, railway tunnels, they, they need different kind of thing. Corridors, monorails. So all, just the point which I am trying to make is that within broad sub-segment also there are many micro-segments. What does this mean to us? Which means each category has different applications. Yeah. This is the infrastructure spend pipeline of government of India. Uh, just to put things in perspective, every year we are spending close to 9 to 10 lakh crores of rupees on infrastructure spending. The important point to note is that uh, what we spent in last five years, which is between FI 16 to 21, and what we are going to spend in next five years, there is a 1.5 times increase in allocation. And for the first time, we are seeing that government had this infrastructure pipeline where we have details of at which stage different projects are. For example, if you see the right-hand side bottom column, in the planning stage, 17% projects are there. In pre-construction and under construction, 60% projects are there. And 4% of the projects in country have already been executed. So this is, there is a very serious focus, serious thrust review mechanism which is there and which is driving India's infrastructure growth story. Roadways, uh, our national highways, rails, uh, these are the major emerging segments which are, we are seeing. These are few examples where we have, this is what we have done internally, our marketing and sales team, in discussion with all the consultants, we have identified opportunities of steel hollow sections in various projects. For station redevelopment projects, uh, there are almost 100 stations are under construction. They will consume 50,000 tons of hollow sections. Telecom, because of this 5G, there is a special focus on 8 lakh new telecom tower. So friends, in India today, uh, the telecom tower density is 0.4 per thousand person. Uh, there is a plan to increase to two and, two and a half times. So there will be one telecom tower per thousand person. So this 8 lakh new telecom towers for 5G network, they will require 400,000 tons of hollow sections. We are already working with some leading telecom tower manufacturers, and we are in touch with them. For airports, the Uran scheme and how you are connecting the small centers, metros, uh, around 200, 222 airports will be operational in India. 80 new are under construction. And their demand will be close to 150,000 tons, 150,000 tons of only hollow sections. Uh, 
for the industrial infrastructure, we have mapped there is another opportunity of 300,000 tons. So these are the just an example of kind of immense opportunity which is lying in front of us for next five years or so. This is on the water and urban sanitization. Uh, this is Amrit and the Jal Jeevan mission which government of India has launched. Uh, we have already supplied close to last year, we supplied 20,000 tons of galvanized tubes there. Uh, but the opportunity is around 400,000 tons. The city gas distribution, like we are shifting from you know, LPG cylinder based to the piped gases to the household. In many cities it is there. So their opportunity is almost 80,000 tons. Bullet train, which is now Ahmedabad, Mumbai work has already started. Maharashtra part has also now, work is now moving forward. 60,000 tons of uh, steel hollow sections uh, demand is there. So slowly but steadily, uh, the demand for hollow sections in India is growing on. If you see this chart uh, in FY22, the blue color shows the total steel consumption and the, uh, the orange shows the steel which was used in construction. In FY22, out of 110 million uh, lakh tons, uh, 55 lakh tons went to, uh, 55 million tons went to uh, the construction. In FY26, this will be around 170 million India will be consuming and 85 uh, million ton will go to construction. And by FY30, uh, India is expected to double the steel production and consumption. We will be at around 200 million tons, and uh, almost 60% of this will be used in construction. But when we see the usage of hollow sections or consumption of hollow sections, globally, it is almost 9% of total steel consumed should be in hollow sections. In European Union and USA, it is close to 8 to 9 percent. Even in uh, Japan, Latin American countries, their steel hollow section usage is very high, 8 to 9 percent. In India, we are only at 4 percent, which means if we just follow the global trend, the usage of hollow sections will double in India. That's the kind of opportunity what we are seeing. 200 million tons of which 8 to 10 percent will be hollow sections. That's the kind of market is there, which is there. So what are we doing about this is just the snapshot. Minimum 16 million tons of hollow section will be there from current 4 million tons. So realizing this uh, opportunity in construction, uh, Tata Steel, we are working on both capacities and capability. Uh, you must have read in newspapers also that our steel plant in India, we want to increase our capacities from 20 million tons to 40 million tons by 2030. Uh, so we are doubling our India's production capacities. In tubes, we are today at 1.2 million tons. And uh, we, we have plans to increase to 2 million tons, double the capacities by FY27. Then we have plans to go to 4 to 5 million tons by FY30. So this capacity expansion is happening. We are also working on two other things which are very important for this audience because you are from the uh, Tata Steel. We have construction material in long products, which is V-bars. We have in flat products. We also have tubes. We have wires. And recently, we have launched this new material business, which is fiber reinforced plastics, which polymers, which are there. So all these five materials uh, we are creating a construction cell in our company where one construction cell will be working closely with our the partners like you, customers like you, and we will provide you holistic view. Apart from materials, we are also working on services and solutions. So for example, we have this modular construction cell, Nestin, which is providing uh, solutions to the customers. We have doors. We have steel uh, hollow sections for the door frame tubes. We are also uh, working on cut and bend, welded wire mesh, different kind of solutions for in construction space. So we are working on both capacity part and capability part. Idea is to provide more and more value to our customer. And this is what 
uh, we are also taking inputs from our counterparts, our colleagues in UK, from Singapore, what is happening there, we want to implement the same thing uh, in India also. Once again, I would like to thank you very much for the uh, SSMB and the expert committee for organizing this uh, Steel Day. Uh, this is one platform where we all come together, we exchange our views, learnings, innovations which are happening, and I think this is a very good way to promote and create an ecosystem which will uh, enhance usage of steel in construction. So I wish uh, there are uh, this session today and tomorrow uh, all success, and I'm sure all of us will p benefit immensely from this two-day event. So thank you very much, and my compliments to all of you. Thank